So if you're using something like Vite or Create React app to set up your React projects, you're pretty much doing it the old junior way. But what you can actually do is actually set up everything using a senior project setup with like tools like Turbo Repo for Mono Repos, Next.js and ESLint, Zustand, Redux, Tailwind, and much, much more. This project setup will boost your productivity and level up your developer experience by 100%. So for a junior developer project setup, you're using something like Yarn Create Vite, and you basically, you know, you're waiting for that V projects and using the V CLI, then you can generate stuff and everything. I mean, that is completely fine. That works. And V nowadays is actually pretty awesome. Or pretty much you can use any CLI or tool that allows you to generate and create a new project for you so you can use for React. On the other hand, this is what a senior project looks like. As you can see from a first glance, and you can tell that this one is a mono repo. It has multiple apps at the same repo, which is a mono repo like documentation, web apps. It has packages, and those packages are shared between all of these applications. So you just like create them once and you use them everywhere. And in the other hand, it has a plenty of other awesome tools that's going to boost your productivity and level up your developer experience. So this is actually the tech stack I went with. And this is actually, in my opinion, the best tech stack you can do in here in 2023 to become a better developer and set up a senior projects in React. So the heart of the project is going to start with Turbo Repo. So as we all know, if you're not familiar with Turbo Repo, it's a tool that allows you to build mono repos and it actually has its own build system. So you can use them both in harmony and it actually does mono repos the right way. So after something like the death of Lerna, I would favor Turbo Repo in here just because it's from the, you know, it's now part of the Vercel, which is, you know, the founders and creators of Next.js and it's pretty reliable and has tons and tons of awesome features. It's pretty fast, damn fast. As you can clearly see here, the project uses Turbo Repo by just noticing the turbo.json in the root directory. And as you all know, mono repos are great because they allow us to put multiple apps and actually share different packages and directories and code between these apps. And when it comes to deployments, it makes it super easy. So for example, here, let's say I got two applications, one, the web application or my website, you can call it like whatever, you just having a SaaS or something for developers and everything. And you got a documentation website in here, this this website or this docs folder is not an entire Next.js application that allows you to render your docs. And this one is an entire Next.js application that is completely separate from the other one, but lives at the same project because it's a mono repo. And this allows them to work perfectly at the same time. Now, the next other cool thing in here is the packages. As Christian, you have got like ESLint, I can share stuff like TS config can share between both of the projects on top, like UI in here, maybe have UI components I want to share. It's super nice in here. And always when opting for bigger projects, you always want to reuse as much code as possible. And instead of like retyping the code, re going through the code and redefining the logic and going through the whole refactoring pain. And here we define the workspaces like ops and packages and screws in here, we got a bunch of scripts in here that are handled by the turbo repo or the turbo CLI. So let's say I want to bootstrap the application here like the web and docs, or I just I want to go ahead and bootstrap them both because they are still the same on a repo and they want to start them in different ports. So I can do turbo or simply can use yarn because that's what I'm already doing. And it can do dev as screws in here, this is actually what's going to run, run dev in parallel. And if you go and open up port 3000, this is our web application and 3001. These are the documentation. And the next thing we want to set up in here is Next.js, TypeScript and ESLint. And thankfully, using Turbo Repo again, that makes our lives way much easier. So when you actually go ahead and run the create turbo in here with CLI that allows you to generate your projects, you're going to get these packages by default. And they are both in Next.js with TypeScript. So Turbo Repo already knows that that, oh, wait a second, we're in 2023. And you must set up the, your projects, right? So you definitely need Next.js, you definitely need TypeScript, and you definitely need like shared components and packages and everything all put inside of a mono repo. And yes, this is worth it. So both of my ops in here, the web op in here and the docs are using Next.js, they're already set up for me. So what about ESLint now and all the configuration like the Airbnb style guide? Well, Turbo Repo likely gives us already the installation of ESLint and some custom configuration, but it doesn't give us everything in one package. So we got to go ahead and install the Airbnb stuff and go through all of those. Likely for us, what Turbo Repo does actually allows you to actually share the configuration or share the ESLint config on a custom package and reuse it throughout all of your applications. So in this one here, as you see, I can install everything. And inside of the index.js in here, this is where your shared ESLint configuration actually lives. As you see, it extends next, Turbo, Airbnb, Airbnb, TypeScript, and Prettier. And it has some like overridden 
in like rules on here so you can you know have all these rules and overrides being across all of your projects and yes believe me this is worth it so turbo repo already gives us inside of the back.json a linting script in here to run turbo run lint and the docs also has another next lint in here to work with that so simply all we need to do just do yarn lint and this will go ahead and run linting for both of the projects because in here it nominates or it gives you like a label of which project is currently running for example web and it's actually linting the web and the ui is linting the ui because it's actually one of packages and we want to lint and so on and so forth and excuse me it's failing already it has two successful three total in here and all of those are actually sharing the same configuration from the eslink config custom and the reason why i chose the airbnb style guide in here because it's one of the most popular style guides plus it actually has the modern rules and it has everything super good for us as react developers all right what's left for us we got prettier and Haskell. so prettier is pretty actually straightforward to set up and it's super easy to get it working because you can install it as a vs code extension and you can just have it all working but the best way to do this is actually install it as a dev dependency to actually format and make your code look cleaner and way much better also you need to make sure that you have gone and have installed the prettier vs code or code format extension in vs code which is gonna run on every single time we do control s is gonna run it's actually gonna use the configuration you specify right over here so instead of the prettier.rc in here you need to put your configuration that's going to be used across all the projects and the last one in the project configuration is haskey which is the git hooks that makes it super easy for you so make sure to install that as a dev dependency in here and once you go through the setup you're going to have this dot haskey folder and inside of it you're going to find all your git hooks i did set up the pre-commit hook in here because i want every single time when i try to commit anything or anybody that's working on the same repo in here that tries to commit anything that commit can actually happen this is the pre-commit or the actual script that runs before that commit happens so i want to run the linting in here so yes i want to run linting before the commit and this is actually pretty good it's going to actually prevent a lot of un unexpected and, and and weird behaviors that you don't know about because a lot of us developers actually 99 percent of the time we forget about running linting before committing on a code so we need to improvise that before every commit so for example if i try to commit my latest changes in here by git add and git commit when i click enter exclusively the turbo lint actually runs and it tries to lint all the mono repos and all the packages i've got and if it finds an issue it doesn't actually commit as Chris has still got a lot of pending changes which means it didn't commit because he failed as Chris in here if we fix the issues and there is no linting errors as Chris he passes successfully we got three successful and we got our commits with no changes left for us now when it comes to starting our projects the first and the most obvious one to use is actually tailwind because we all know tailwind is actually a really powerful css tool and it makes our lives a lot easier as developers and improves the developer experience preview styles gives you like pre made CSS kind of utilities functions. So the setup of Tailwind is actually pretty straightforward. It has documentation for pretty much anything from Next.js to Svelte to anything pretty much from Next.js to literally any other framework. And as close in here, I already got the setup. So for example, I got Tailwind config in here, got the configuration that works fine. And if I go into my components, for example, or rather go to the page in here, as close in here, I'm using the Tailwind, I'm using it to CSS classes or utility classes in here. And that actually allows me to create really awesome styles and just style everything here from like flex boxes and centering items. The other two tools that I can't live without is the T1 macro and emotion is a library that allows to use actual CSS inside of JavaScript. So T1 in here can actually work with both style components or emotion, but I went with emotion because it's the simplest one in here. Now for setting up actually T1 macro and emotion in here to make them work together in harmony, you gotta set up some Babel RC in here inside of the, your, your Next.js project, like the web projects in here, plugin macro. So you gotta install all of these stuff, which might look a little bit ugly, but believe me, it's completely worth it to use the T1 macro. And this is actually what it looks like. So for example, you can use T1 from T1 macro. You create a div that's gonna return a new component with the T1 CSS utilities applied to that particular component. Then later on, you can use that component here instead of putting class name, which makes it look ugly like this. You can just put a component here. You have got the style either this, or you have it in a completely different file. Yes, it's it makes the code look way much cleaner and super straightforward. And for the UI component library in here, I went with Checker UI simply because it's the most reliable one and it has plenty of components, like a lot of components and the style animation is super smooth and super minimal. And I went with the React icons in here because this library has every single other icons like hero icons or has font awesome icons. All of them are in a single library. You can install the library and you can use literally any of that actual icons. Okay, so for Steam, I went with Zustin instead of Redux. As I said before, it's super lightweight. I love Zeus 
content. I love stores. It's a global state and it makes things look way much easier. And then with SWR, which is a Vercel and Next.js kind of like fetching library, it's the same as the React Query. You can go with React Query. It works with Next.js as well. But I like the SWR in here because it's made by the, you know, the team behind Next.js. So it's super reliable. And for form state management and making sure we get the best user experience in forms, I went with the React hook form. Any other forms like Formic or the final form. Yes, when I use this, this particular library, this form tool in here, it completely changed my mind about other form libraries and it completely fell in love with this one. And I went also with Zod in here for input validation for our forms. And it works perfectly with the React hook form in here as well with some adapter. So using all of these components and libraries and tools that I listed before, I was able to create this pretty simple application in here and just like straightforward sign up page using Next.js. So for example, welcome to the outer space. Once you click on sign up now, it actually takes you to the other page is a sign up page and this actually gives you the sign up. So this actually builds using all the other tools from Jacker UI, Twin, Tailwind CSS, um, the React hook form in here, the SWR for mutations and registering everything. So for example, if I have some data in here like Alex, Alex email and password and click sign up, you can get thanks for registering and all of those are working together. As soon as you can go to the register form, this is actually our model and like register components. So the first thing you notice, it actually uses some components from the UI package. And remember, the UI package is actually the package we shared on the packages in here in our model repo. And if you go inside of that UI in here, as you can see, I'm just re-exporting the Jackery UI. But obviously, you can just export your own components. You can share them up. You can use Jackery UI inside of it, and so on and so forth. I'm using validation schema in here using Zod, which is the Z in here. I'm doing some interfaces and TypeScript and doing a bunch of stuff. Like for example, I'm doing the sign up in here. I'm using Axios to sign up to like dummy and mocked up API or fake API. And I'm using the use SWR mutation. And for forms in here, I'm just doing the use form. So I use form in here with some resolver to move Zod resolver and to make it work. And we're just doing every single form in here from like all of these like form controls in here to make it work perfectly. And for the testing part of the project, so we're going to go with just testing library Cypress for end to end testing and the mock service worker for mocking our APIs. So obviously the answer for any projects that uses React and you want to do testing or pretty much JavaScript in general is just just is literally the best library you can do there for testing. And it's pretty reliable. It's from Facebook as well. Now for React specifically, you got to use something like testing library in order to render and shallow rendering and access the DOM that gets rendered and everything and test all of this like, you know, do some unit testing and integration testing with those components. And for Cypress, you're going to have like end to end testing with like a real browser. And last but not least, the mock service worker in here allows you to mock your APIs with something like this. So I already did set up just in here for my project and so I did just in here and have some specific configuration in order to make sure we can run the Twin and Twin parser and all the Twin stuff and everything. So for example, inside of my test folder in here, I created the test folder in here just to put all the global tests for all of those. I was going to describe a home page in here and I'm checking, oh, this home page should go ahead and render. And this is actually our home page. And here we're checking if the sign up link actually does exist in the home page or not. And since Turbo is actually set up to run the test in here, so if I do yarn test in here, it's going to go ahead and run testing for everything. As in here has the home page should render. It's actually has a tick inside of that. It has passed. Now, the last thing you want to know is actually the mocking APIs. So I have another folder inside the web. The handlers in here is actually where I mock every single handle. And for me, I'm just mocking the sign up handler in here. I'm returning a message like thanks for registering. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. You're going to find this mono repo and all this boilerplate in my GitHub repo. So whenever you need a new awesome senior project setup, you can go ahead and grab it. You can even clone it and you can use it. 